Hi, welcome to this week's edition of the Pool Guy Show. Today I'm going to continue part two of the interview that I did with the Pool Chaser podcast. In this episode, I'm going to talk about getting into the industry and the profession as a whole and how we need to get more respect as a profession and industry. This podcast is brought to you by InyoPools.com. InyoPools has been helping pool owners find the right pool parts in 2001. With over 50,000 pool parts in stock, order online today and have the parts delivered right to your door. This podcast is also brought to you by Riptide Pool Vacuum System. Riptide is a powerful vacuum system that gets large leaf debris off the bottom of the pool rapidly. You can learn more about the Riptide Pool Vacuum System at www.riptidevac.com. And before I jump into the part two of the podcast, I wanted to also mention that my app is now available on the Apple App Store as well as Google Play. To download the app for your device or phone, just go to my um homepage of my website swimmingpoollearning.com and scroll down and you're going to see the download link for Google Play and for the Apple App Store and this is for the application I created for your device and phone that makes my resources much more accessible as well as I also have a link to a pool calculator, um, a pool size calculator and other helpful links and resources all in this app and the app is ad free and also free to download and install on your iPhone or Android phone. So let's jump into part two of the four part recording that I did with the Pool Chasers podcast show. Welcome to your go to podcast for the pool and spa industry. My name is Tyler Rasmussen and my name is Greg Viafania and this is the Pool Chasers podcast. Yeah, so that kind of leads us to our next question. Um, so why do you, you know, believe in, you know, helping people out so much and, you know, just kind of, because you can tell you're really trying to help out as many people as possible, whether it be the homeowner or somebody that wants to start a pool company. Yeah, because I think the industry has a bad rap, you know. Um, the you industry think it deserves needs to, it? To get, in a way it does because no one's been out there kind of guiding it and leading it. And I think the manufacturers are, have, have a lot to blame for that. Uh, they're focused on making money and getting their product out there, but they're not focused on building up um, an army, basically, behind them. Um, you know that 85% of the pools are done by homeowners out there across the country. So the pool industry is not a huge part of that. And it's, I think it's the fault of the fact that the reputation that we get, because a lot of, a lot of it is a lack of training and knowledge and information, they have, tra- they have trade shows, things like that. And I think now Pentair is doing a lot of um, training outside of trade shows, and so is Zodiac. But for a long time, they weren't. And so how can you have an industry um, sustain itself without training, without knowledge, without mentors, without any kind of um, associations that are going to keep everyone um, on a level playing field? Because anyone can get a truck and a pole and get out there and get accounts, but it doesn't mean they know what they're doing. So I think it's an industry-wide problem that, that we perpetuated by not focusing on the fact that we are a trade industry. And now I think it's different. I think the last – I would say the last three or four years, there's been a real push to make this a trade industry and make pool service on a level with the plumber, the plumbing industry type of thing. Because we probably know more than a plumber knows. I mean, um, or we're up there with the plumber, but people don't respect us in that, that regard. We're taking care of a, of a 20,000-gallon body of water – that you know could potentially make you sick if it's not cared for properly. Mm-hmm. Um, commercial accounts, you know, there's what one or two, one or two million commercial accounts out there, and people overlook the fact that when they go to a hotel or they go on vacation, that someone's actually taking care of that pool and make sure that you're not going to get sick and die basically by swimming in it. So our industry has a bad rap, and I think um, one of my goals is to change that and educate people that you know this is an industry that is great to work in. And we need a lot of young people to get out there and, and, and do this right. Yeah, we couldn't agree more. And we have to kind of uplift this all as a community because in order to get that generation to take this serious and learn everything, we're going to have to start paying them more money. And they deserve it, you know, to be to be paid more to stick around and learn a trade. But we can't do that if we're not, as a whole, 
charging more for, you know, weekly pool service and chemicals and all those different things because it costs a ton of money to do things the right way and get these guys CPO certified and make them employees and, you know, make sure that they have medical benefits and, you know, they get a raise maybe once a year, every six months, like all that stuff takes an insane amount of, you know, money and time. And, um, we can't do that if you're only charging, you know, 90 bucks a month for pool service. It just, it just doesn't make any sense, you know? Yeah. And I, th- I think that's also the fault of the industry too, because again, that image that uh, we just clean your pool and, I think the other, the flip side of that image is that we actually keep you from getting sick. You know, we, we, we keep you healthy. We keep your kids healthy. Um, cleaning the pool is, is nothing. Anyone can do that. It's the other part of it that's the important part. The fact that you're not going to have bacteria in there. The fact that the water quality is going to be good. It's going to be swim ready. And I think that's one thing the industry needs to really push, and we don't. Um, you know, I, I don't know if they have to change the name. I don't know what it is. But when you say pool service, people always think about, the maintenance of the pool. No one thinks about the chemistry and about keeping the water balanced and healthy. And I, I don't know what that would take to change that. That, um, But I think that's one thing that why people don't want to pay a lot of money because they think we're just like the gardeners cleaning their yard. It's, you can't die from walking on your grass, you know. We could definitely die if the pool's not healthy. Yeah, we definitely try to educate our customers when we do bids on what we actually do, you know, because – and it's kind of silly to us sometimes when they complain about like one leaf here or there sitting on top of the pool because, you know, yes, it's, it is our job to skim the pool, but I mean, if the wind blows and a leaf falls in it, that's not the majority of our job. You know, the majority of the job is the water chemistry, figuring out, you know, how to balance that correctly. Like you said, to keep people safe. Also, you know, we're, we're sort of plumbers, sort of electricians, sort of, you know, it's, we have all this knowledge on the equipment. We're, we're expected to maintain this and they they don't know what they're doing you know majority of the time they'll they'll just they don't even see the leaks we see they don't see they don't see that the pump's not priming correctly because just because you see water moving in the pot doesn't mean it's doing what it's supposed to be doing you know you got the back pressure your filters at 40 psi you know you haven't backwashed in who knows how long like you know there's a just because water is like sort of moving doesn't mean it's working correctly you know we try to definitely go through the, the quality of service they're receiving and what they're actually receiving to educate them and show them like, you know, we're not just here to push a pole, you know, that's like you said, most anybody can do that. It's the education part, the, the knowledge that they're paying for. And you need to show them that they're paying for that knowledge and not just, you know, you clean the pool. But we get complimented yeah. all the time by the transparency and just being proactive because even doing an initial pool service bid, it's, everything is this gate going to be locked do we get a key can we make sure that there's a hide a key can we put a combination lock on there put that in the notes we clean the filter every six months and if it needs to be done sooner we're going to let you know but there will be a card on file we will let you know where would you like your grids cleaned at where would you like your cartridges cleaned at you know what i mean after we get done we're going to take a picture of the wall that we're doing it next to to make sure that you know because we get, you know, you get complaints that you sprayed off cartridges and all the crap went all over the wall or, you know, you bit, made a big mess with the, you know, with the diatomaceous earth all over the grass. So I think it's that level of transparency and getting it all out there in the front and looking at what am I trying to do with my business? Okay, let's put it in a service agreement and talk about it, not just, you know, putting together a five-page service agreement and like, yeah, just sign it and they don't look at it. It's like really going through it with them because that's going to gain a good customer because they might say, uh, that's way too much. I didn't think it was that serious. Well, you know what? You're not the customer for us because we take this serious and our customers need to take this serious too because you, it's not serious until it becomes a problem. You know, when you get home and there's, you know, your backwash hose is rolled out in the middle of the yard or something like that. And it's like, I thought you guys were going to do this or, you know what I mean? I thought you were going to do a service call and there's photos and notes, um, you know, cause that's what you guys pitch. But you know, and we, we haven't been taking on, you know, service for pr- probably about a month or so um, just because we're trying to take care of our current customer base and we don't want to bite more than we can chew. You know, and I think there's not too many people that do that, you know, they just take, take, take. And it's like if it doesn't if it's not making sense and you can't take care of, you know, your current customer base it shouldn't be taking on new stuff. Yeah, I agree 100 percent. I mean, you guys have it down good out there, so. And you got the hundred degree weather all, all summer, so that's another factor too, you know. Oh my gosh, it's it's out of control. Even mixed yeah. in with the monsoons, it's 
it's actually kind of crazy that a lot of customers don't really understand even the new ones coming in. Cause I mean, we get so many calls and it's like, they're wanting to fire their pool guy because their pool looks like crap. And we stick up for them in a way. Cause we're like, we don't know what company you're talking about, but we've dealt with some of the craziest storms that we've ever had. I mean, trees are blowing over, knocking people's houses over, you know, trees are knocking over pool equipment. There's trees in pools, there's boulders in pools. There's barbecues in pools. I mean, <laughs> shit, you name it. Kids are getting blown into pools, man. It's just, it's unreal. And it's, they don't understand that a body of water is not a natural thing. And when shit is blowing into it, it's going to take a second to get it back on track. And it doesn't help when, you know, another storm comes a week later. It's just, I think there's like this, because we talked about it when we were kids seeing a swimming pool, you didn't think anything of it. You didn't think about water chemistry and adding things to it. You're just like, as a blue pool. Nice. I'm going to enjoy it. That's it. And I think that's how a lot of other people see it until you start having to take care of it. Like, why does it look like that? Like, I thought it was just supposed to be like perfect all the time. (laughs) I'm not sure why, but now that you're explaining it to me, I guess that makes sense. (laughs) Exactly. Do you do certain things to educate your customers on like that? Yeah, I'm thinking about doing something. Um, I'm working on an idea to educate um, you just send them a YouTube and, link. Yeah, that's a good idea. Um, but there's definitely there's definitely something that needs to be done to educate the customers. And I think, um, you know, I think that I think one of the questions you were asking also is um, is it counterintuitive um, to have the, all the videos and the pool service and like ed- educating the customers? Does it hurt the service industry in a way? Um, but I don't think so. I think when a customer is ignorant, it makes your job a lot harder. They don't understand why they have to keep the water level up. They don't understand why they have to run their pump more than two hours a day. Um, they don't understand why certain things happen. So I think a certain level of education, just like when you go to a mechanic, a good mechanic will tell you why you have to change your oil, why you have to you know, change your transmission fluid, why this this part of the car needs to be done. And, of course, you can do your own oil change and do your own work on your car but um he educates you for a reason because he wants you to know that if you don't do this you could damage your vehicle and i think it's the same with pools i think what i put out there is educate people that this is what you have to do to keep the pool running and if you have a pool service this is going to help them a lot and you know not adding water to the pool and letting it get below the skimmer doesn't help anybody you know you get to a pool like that it's very frustrating and Nothing is running and everything is, um, the pool could be even turning green at that point. So I think it really helps to have the customers kind of know. Um, one of the things, big things that I tell, one I said this on a few of my podcasts kind of jokingly is customers should not touch anything, you know. And I've had many customers say, um, oh, I emptied the pump basket out for you because I saw some leaves in there. And you get back there and like the O-ring's not in there. It's on the ground, you know. <laughs> pool's not running for the whole week so baskets in backwards oh <laughs> uh, yeah i see a lot of that that's the funny one basket and backwards hard to even tell until you take it out sometimes especially one of those gigantic uh you know north star pumps <laughs> but um yeah i've had customers take those lids off like i can't get this lid back on. i don't know what happened you know well don't take those lids off those are impossible to get on even for us you know <laughs> Right. Yeah. Definitely so, hands off the equipment for sure. So you want to try something, pick up a pole and a net and start skimming. You can, I'll let you do that. <laughs> yeah. Right. Or they empty the skimmer basket and don't put it back in. I've had that happen a few times. I'll get there and it's on the deck. You know, it's like, uh, the basket goes back in after you empty it. <laughs> you know? oh, for sure. So, yeah, I definitely wanted to ask that question about being counterintuitive because I know you do a lot with between pool service and homeowners. Um, but I think we used to talk about, when we first started doing the business, um, we used to li- think we liked the people that had no idea what, about a pool or what to do or like the new homeowners moving into taking over and never had a pool before. We used to think those were the best and those are the worst because they have they want to like bug you and learn these things and they don't, have, they don't know why you're doing things. I think the best customers for us now are the ones that have, ha- have been through a couple pool guys or tried to take care of it themselves and understand how difficult it is because then they really appreciate you know a good quality service. So they're definitely better when they have a little bit of knowledge for sure. Or they think they know. I think so. Yeah, and I think, um, you know, people that are going to do their own pools are going to do their own pools. And 
people that are going to repair their own cars are going to do their own cars. For a long time there, I did my own oil change. I did my own brakes. And it got to the point where it was like, you know what? I'm not going to pay my guy to do it. Even though he charges 180 bucks for the brakes, I can do it for, you know, 60 bucks. But it's, it's worth it for me to just take it in and have him do it. And I think that people that do their own pool, a lot of times they have no choice but to do it themselves because they're in an area where there's no good service. Or they have the time and they want to do it themselves. And it's not going to impact the industry in any way. I think there's a definite definitely a category for pool service and a category for do it yourself and i don't think um there's much crossover there you think it's just their mentality that they're gonna do it themselves regardless basically basically i mean my dad he's uh 71 years old he's got a pool in indio in california here that's like 120 degrees in the summer Mm -hmm. and he does it himself he won't hire anybody you know and he could he has the resources to hire somebody but he won't because he likes doing it himself so you're going to see a lot of that, I think, in the industry. Um, so I, I think those that want service, like, you know, there's there's doctors on my route. I can never see them out there doing their pool. You know, there's single moms. I can never see them doing their pool. And there's people that are just too busy. I mentioned a lot of times in, in my videos and podcasts that if you don't have the time to do it yourself, you got to hire somebody because um, it's going to turn on you very quickly. So and a lot of people realize, hey, I don't have time to do this, you know. It's just it's just impossible to fit into my schedule. I'm gonna hire somebody, and to be honest with you, the rates that we charge are nowhere near the rates you would pay for a house cleaner or for a gardener or for a plumber to do some work on your house. I mean, um, so it's it's very affordable. I mean, you mentioned that it's probably hurting the industry that it's affordable, but I think it also helps to see it that way too. That I can hire someone to do my pool. It's not gonna kill me. You know, not a lot of the properties that i service the gardener charges 400 dollars a month because they're gigantic um, lawns to maintain um, so there's definitely a, a, a trade-off there as far as uh, do-it-yourselfers and the people that are going to hire people they're they're going to either hire you or they're not that's basically the way i see it how old your oldest customer do you have some from like when you first started i don't because i'm in a, a little different service area than that so oh. but i've had i've got customers that i've been doing the pool for 15 years and um you know same customer they've seen me before i had my son they see my son growing up and all the christmas cards i send every every year uh, so i have a lot of long-term clients that that um that i've been with for a long time so um you know i i really don't have anyone quit service basically it's just they move away it's what happens or they pass away in some cases which is unfortunate um, a lot of the clientele are older that I service, so um, that's something that happens. Okay. Yeah, I know this sure. isn't one of the – this isn't on our questions, but I'm just kind of curious what you think about reverse osmosis because we don't talk to too many pool service companies out in California, but I know that's a bigger thing for you guys. Yeah, so I, I talk to the guy at the trade show. Um, every year I talk to him, and um, basically I think – the truck that they have now is probably the best truck out of all the ones that I've seen, the ones at the last show. I believe it saves 90% of, 90% of the water um, with this new truck that they have. And he's got all these – he's got sand filters in there. He's got particle filters. And one of the things that he mentioned, which I thought was a, a key point that you don't think about, is that if in California, a lot of the pools are saturated with cyanuric acid because we use tablets – there's been no rain, hardly any rain. We had one year of rain. And no one really drains and refills their pools much because of the restrictions and the supposed restrictions and the higher water bills they get by doing that. And so the saturation of cyanuric acid is pretty high. And one of the things that he talked about about this is that if you were just to drain a pool down and refill it, the cyanuric acid can stay in the plaster and kind of leak back into the pool. And you don't eliminate it. It's still there. But what they do, they pull it all out. I mean, they pull all the cyanuric acid out of the pool, which I think is one of the key factors in the process. And according to him, they're just so busy with with service calls that they have no time. I mean, they have, they're trying to sell their truck out here to other people to do the service. So it'll be big, I think. It's going to get bigger. I talked to the guy originally who started it in San Diego about five years ago. It almost bankrupted him when he started the business. Um but this is one truck it cost one hundred fifty thousand to build his truck, and he had no business. No one knew, even knew what it was. So he was just trying to get work. But now he's so busy, he doesn't even leave his little area in San Diego. So definitely going to be big, I think, in the future. Yeah. Um, over, I don't know. 
Do you have restrictions in your area as far as draining? Mm, no, um, not really. No, they threaten it quite a bit as far as the <laughs> drought, but it hasn't really been put in place yet where we can't drain them. So the only restrictions we have is really trying to find cleanouts that are buried and stuff, but yeah. no, not too much. It's at the wild, wild west out here. <laughs> but I remember yeah, talking I to him at the trade show. Was that the gentleman? I know he was on the news when California was going through that big drought. Did he have his truck inside the actual trade show and he was next to the wall? Like if you walked in the yeah. trade show to the left, that was him. Yeah. Yeah. I talked to him for a while. He's a very cool guy. And, uh, he was walking us through the whole entire thing. And I just thought it was pretty cool. Um, cause you don't really have too many reverse osmosis trucks out here, but it was cool to think that you could actually be swimming in your pool in the summertime and actually go through that process of taking the water out and filtering it and putting it back into the pool. And like you said, you know, 90% is going back in, but it's filtered and it's, you know, it's better water going back in. Yeah. But, so you guys buy a truck then? <laughs> no. no, not for Arizona. <laughs> but I mean, we do acid washes as well. So, you know, usually when we do a drain out here, starting in the fall, is we drain a pool and then we do like a muriatic acid um, bath on the whole surface of the pool. And we work with tile cleaning companies that, you know, half the time will come in and, you know, everybody wins. They get, you know, good work. You get a tile clean out of it and the pool's empty and we come in and, you know, do an acid wash and get fresh water back in and, um, you know, get yeah, new it's water. A lot of our repair division in the wintertime is, is doing acid washes and draining pools. I've, I could see in California, if you didn't have that, might might be more difficult in the wintertime for sure. Um, I wanted to ask. Yeah, it's not, it's, it's, not politi- it's not really politically correct to drain a pool in California. I mean, it's just <laughs> that's something that we do, you know. Right. <laughs> we don't even have, we're not going to have straws out here next year, so, you know. I've heard about that. That's crazy. <laughs> I wanted to ask one question. You, since you've had customers for 15 years, I mean, we've had some that we've had for like five plus years now, but have you gone through where you've raised their prices at all or is that something you have have done and how did you do that yeah that's a tough part of the industry too you know because there's so much competition out there and it's like a, a level playing field in california a lot of areas are like that florida is, is like that too where you know but the demand here for service is pretty high so it's i i really don't think you need to you can always get new clients at a higher rate and keep some people that you've had a long time because a lot of them are on a fixed income. They complain about a lot of things, but I charge. We charge for everything outside of the acid and chlorine here in California. We charge for the tablets. We charge for algaecide. We charge for the filter cleaning. So if you add it all up, there's a lot of money to be made outside the service charge itself. But the difficulty anyone has is raising prices here in California because it's such a hard. I don't know. It's a psychological thing that everything's so darn expensive already mm-hmm. that it's crazy out here. You know, it's just ridiculous. I mean, the medium home price in my area is um, what is it, six hundred thirty thousand. So it's just a crazy way to live. So wow. I don't know. It's just it's one of those things where um, it's difficult to do that. You know, and. But you have to do it to keep up with inflation, of course. But it's not something that you want to do where you raise it more than ten dollars a, a month on, on a customer because it gets kind of scary at that point for them. Yeah. So I always tell people that you want to set a higher rate for the new clients coming in, and they kind of wean off the lower-paying clients on your route um, because it's it could be difficult to raise rates across the board, but. You know, it just depends on the area, I think. Some areas could take it easily, like Temecula here. Um, it's a growing area, and you can charge a lot more than someone else charges with no problem, and you can raise rates no problem. But there's other areas where um, it's much more difficult to do that. So I think it's area-dependent and it's service-dependent, too, like um, how you have your customer set up, have, how you have your business set up. I think those guys that do the all-inclusive rate, filter cleaning, tablets, all the chemicals, and they charge a flat fee, have a harder time because psychologically you see this big number of 130, 150. And to raise that up is harder than guys like me that are charging, you know, 95 to 100, but then we charge outside everything else outside the service. So it's kind of one of those things where it's how you bill and how you charge. 
but it's always a difficult thing. You ask anyone, it's, it's really difficult to do that. Do customers feel like you, you nickel and dime them then if you're charging for every chemical? Because I feel like that, as I guess a concern of ours when we first started doing it was we felt like customers don't like the, the bill fluctuating so much a month. Is that some, anything you do with? No, I mean, I, I, I like using the analogy of the mechanic. You know, you go, to, you go get the oil change and the guy says, well, you need, also need a fuel filter and you're going to need um, – you know, a, t- a belt when your belt is worn out. So I'm going to charge you for the parts and labor. I mean, he's not nickel and diming you. He's selling you something that you need. And I think customers will, will have to start looking at at that way is that, you know, we have a monthly service rate and then I put a Polar X in your pool and then your cleaner needs um, new tracks on it. Um, There's all going to be parts that I charge you. If you, you know, you need conditioner, I'm going to charge you for a bottle of liquid conditioner. I, I like the liquid stuff. It's really cool. It's very easy to use. I'm going to charge you, you know, $34 for that gallon of liquid conditioner. And so they get kind of used to that. And you don't charge them that all the time. So they have that monthly rate. And then every six months you hit them with a filter charge. And you hit them with a tablet charge at the beginning of the season. So they kind of know when the charges are coming. So they're set up for it. But I think, for me, I think that's the best way to do it because then your profit is not, profit is such a hard thing to do. And if you're including all the chemicals in it, um, your profit can go down. If they raise the tabs from you know $85 a bucket to $95 a bucket, that $10, you absorb it versus the customer absorbing it. So I think that's one thing that I think for business setup, the guy that trained me, Doug Ward, back in the day, he, um, he did that too. Everything was itemized for him. That's how he set up his route. He was kind of out of the box too because back then no one did that. He was doing it that way too. He would itemize them for all the chemicals. He would even charge them for acid and chlorine wow. outside of the service charge. Yeah, he would charge them. If, uh, he would write down one fourth gallon of acid and charge a, I don't know, eighty cents. One gallon of chlorine charge like a dollar eighty. But he was even itemizing stuff that I include the acid and chlorine, which is really out of the box. But um, I think that's the way to do it to make money. Because your mechanic does the same thing. He doesn't tell you, oh, it's going to be $300, and he includes all the parts. You, you go pick up your car, all the parts are itemized, what he pays for them, and what you pay for them. I mean, he doesn't tell you what he pays for them, but what you pay for them and, and the labor. So I think that's the best way to do the business setup, and that way you can charge for every everything. And so you are nickel and diming the customers, and maybe a few will feel that way. You know, you know, I charge even for an O-ring for a whisper flow pump, you know. Um, I'm not going to yeah, say the wholesale totally, cost yeah. here, but <laughs> but – they get a charge for, you know, $7 for an O-ring, and they're like, well, what is this, you know? Well, I'm nickel and diming you, you know, <laughs> basically. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you say you do a, just a, way- a, a tab charge in the beginning of the season? What, what is that? Yeah. Yeah, tablets. They, the customer pays for a 50-pound bucket of tablets at the beginning of the season, and we leave it at their house so, oh. so that it's there, yeah. Gotcha. Um, it's pretty standard in California to do that because the tablets are, are part of the – the maintenance of some of the pools here. Yeah, we so use a lot really of tablets too. But yeah. Hmm. Then they just don't mind. You just put it by the equipment or something. They don't. They don't mind it sitting there. Yeah, just buy their equipment, and then we just you know it stays there the whole time, and just they last about a season and a half here in California, depending if you use a pool or X in the pool or not. Right. That's a pretty good idea. I like that one. I'm gonna stop it right there, and then next week I'm gonna be talking more about how I started my YouTube channel and all the other stuff that I do online. So I hope you enjoyed this week's podcast. If you're a homeowner looking for more resources for your pool, just go to my website, swimmingpoolearning.com, and you can find an ebook. I also have a print book available. If you're in the pool service industry and you want more one-on-one help, you may want to check out my coaching site. This is where I offer phone and text services where you can call me and text me in real time with a problem. You also get invited to the group app where there's Um, About 50 or 60 pool guys and gals that are posting in there every day. And you can post a question and help also by answering questions there. To learn more about my coaching program, you can go to my website, swimmingpoollearning.com. I also have a dedicated website for the coaching site. That site at www.poolguycoaching.com. I hope you found this podcast helpful. Inyopools.com is a proud sponsor of Swimming Pool Tips and have been helping pool owners find the right pool parts since 2001. With over 50,000 pool parts in stock, order online today and have your parts delivered right to your door. The pool guy podcast show.